All right, today we're going to 15, which has more on probability rules. First, we'll look at or probability problems. Um, in probability language, or means that either event happening or both happening is considered a success, as long as it's in a single trial. Um, for example, if we were talking about um, drawing red or green marbles from a bag, um, that probability of red or green would be the probability of getting a red plus the probability of getting a green plus the probability of any double counted overlap. Now for the case for marbles in a bag, um, there wouldn't necessarily be any overlap. To make general addition rule problems much easier. So let's think of a different example besides the marbles. Let's say that we're talking about rolling things, uh, rolling two dice and maybe or maybe even rolling one die. So let's say we want to look at getting a four, right? Or getting an even. Let's make it a little more interesting and change, change it to maybe getting something greater than or equal to four. Okay, so in this circle, numbers that are greater than or equal to four would include four, which is even, so it goes in here, five, which is not even, so it goes out here, six, and then over here I need the other even numbers, if there are any, that would be two, and then I've got four and six, and then out here would be numbers that are neither even or greater than or equal to four, which would be one, we've got two, we've got three. And so that's everything. And now you can answer all kinds of probability questions, like the probability of getting a number greater than or equal to four or even, would be one, two, three, four out of six total. So that's the probability of getting, if you just use a formula, that'd be three out of six plus three out of six minus two out of six, the overlap that got counted twice, once in this circle and once in that circle. Okay, so that's in a nutshell um, how those Venn diagram and OR problems work. All right, conditional probability. Uh, so the vertical bar is the notation for given or a conditional situation. So probability of A given B um, means the probability of A happening on the condition that B happens at the same time or has already happened. Um, the formula to calculate that, the probability of A given B, is the probability of A and B, which would be the probability of A times the probability of B, right? divided by the probability of A. If you have a contingency or two-way table, it is typically easy just to find the values in the table instead of having to use this formula. Um, probability of A and B in a contingency table would be in the box, the box in the table where both A and B are true. Okay, And then probability of A in the table is the total for event A in the table. So. Like if I wanted to say find the probability of something like um, liking red given that you're a girl. So I would want the probability of being a girl and liking red over the probability of being a girl. A given B, also the probability of being A given B. The probability. Yep, okay. All right. And so look at some examples of that in your textbook. Um, another one is and probability, so the probability of this and that. The probability of this and that is the probability of this times the probability of that if the events are independent. If this and that are not independent, the probability of that is changed once this occurs. And so then it's still technically the probability of this times the probability of that, but the probability of that is actually on condition that this has already happened or so given that this has already happened. So that's the generalized multiplication rule. And if you need to, you can go back and plug in this formula for the conditional part right here, if that helps, okay? Usually if you're thinking about a situation like playing cards, you don't have to use a formula. You can just reason through it, like the probability of getting two aces. So ace and ace would be four out of 52 times three out of 51. This is no longer four out of 52 because you've already drawn an ace. So the probability of ace given an ace is the three out of 51, okay? Uh, testing for independence. If the probability uh, P, uh, that given this, is the same as the probability of that, then it is not changed given that this occurs. Okay, so that means the two events are independent events. Doesn't matter 
if event A happens, the probability of event B is unchanged. So like it doesn't matter if you drew an ace, the probability of getting another ace is unchanged. Well that would only be true if we were replacing the card and reshuffling before we drew. That would mean the events are independent. Now independent does not mean disjoint or mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive events cannot be independent. Knowing that one occurred means that the other one definitely did not, right? i.e. the probability of one of them changed to zero given that the other happened. That's what mutually exclusive events are, right? Those are from like that Venn diagram where they don't overlap at all. Well, if this one happened, that one can't have happened. There's no overlap. So that means um, they're definitely not independent. So don't confuse that terminology. Um, now, if you are trying to test, from independ test for independence, from a contingency table or you know, to a table, then what you'll want to compare is you can compare the probability of something happening um, in the total column, in the margin of the table, versus the probability of it happened under a particular condition. So like we could say the probability of people who liked red in general versus uh, the probability of girls who liked red or the probability of boys who liked red. If all of those percents are about the same, then we would say um, gender and the um, color preference are independent. But if we see, let's say, 20% of people overall like red, but then it's 40% of girls like red, then those would be different, and so that they would not be independent events. All right, tree diagrams and reversing the conditioning. This was the harder mathematical stuff in Chapter 15. Um, one of the key things you have to look out for is read very carefully to know what's being asked for. The probability of A and B, the probability of A given B, and the probability of B given A are all different, and the way they're worded, they might sometimes sound the same. So like this, for example, might be the probability of having HIV and getting a positive test result. This might be said as the probability of having HIV given a positive test result. Or if you've had a positive test result, what's the probability that you have HIV? This, on the other hand, would be swapping those two. So if you um, have HIV, what's the probability of getting a positive test result? Okay, so reversing the order there, reversing the conditioning. So let's say you know the probability of a random person having HIV, and you know the probabilities of positive test results. So you, so you know A and you know B um, for people who do and do not have HIV. So you can make a tree diagram. And so you could have a branch. Well, let me actually draw it a little bit, maybe. So I don't want that one anymore. Can I erase the eraser. Is there a way to erase the whole thing? No. I'm sure that there isn't a way to erase the whole thing. I don't know how to do it. So let me erase here. Sorry for this. Hold on just a sec. Okay, so let's say that. Um, so we can make a branch. So if we know the probability of having HIV, whatever that is, and then the probability of not having HIV, and so we could put that probability here, like point, point 0.9 and point 0.1. I'm just making up these numbers. And then we can do the probability of positive and negative test results given each of these, right? So these branches coming off are conditional probabilities here because they depend on that you have HIV. So if you have HIV, what's the probability of getting a positive result? Well, hopefully that's pretty high. Let's say it's 0.9. And the probability of getting a false negative, hopefully that's pretty low. I'm just making up these numbers. These are not real numbers. Um, and if you don't have HIV, hopefully you won't get a positive test result. Hopefully that probability is pretty low, right? And if you don't have HIV, hopefully you do get a negative test result like you're supposed to, and so hopefully the probability of that is pretty high. You would have to know all of those things. And so now if you multiply out any particular branch, so 0.1 times 0.9 here, okay, that would give you the probability of HIV and a positive test result. Okay. Now if we wanted to know the probability of A given B, so the probability of HIV given a positive test result. That's not in this tree anywhere yet, because this here is the other way around, right? This is the probability of a positive result given 
that somebody has HIV, right? This has already happened. If we want the reverse conditioning, that's where that formula back on the other slide for ca uh, calculating a conditional probability will come in handy. So we need the probability of H and positive, right? So the probability of H and positive. out of positive, out of all the positives, right? So that would be, um, and so when we look for the positives in the tree, right, there are two places where you get a positive result. That would be this one here and this one here. And so really it's the probability of HN positive over the probability of HN positive plus the probability of not HIV and positive. Okay, so that's called reversing the conditioning. Now we did several examples of that in class, but if you look in your textbook on pages 300 to 302, uh, you can see some more examples of that. And so those are about the hardest type of probability questions, you know, where you have to really reason through the diagrams, Venn diagrams, don't forget those, um, reversing the conditioning and reading those contingency tables very carefully. Okay, so those are all the types of probability that we discussed in chapters 15 related to chapter 14. And then after that, we went on to um, some different kinds of things with probability, like the random variables. And, uh, and then in chapter 17, we had binomial distributions and stuff like that, and geometric. Okay, so that is it for our review of chapter 15.